want to drop the paper like that? Yeah, so start by drawing a line about halfway. Now, in the global map, when we start to assemble this, we're going to use the equator and the 45 line and the Arctic Circle as kind of measuring points. So this is going to be about the 45 line. About. Now, in order to make sure that we have this, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put a couple of things in here just to make sure that I keep my, to keep my, um, to keep my proportions. So here, we're just going to put the South, South Asian Peninsula, okay, Can we and Asia. Catch up, please. So we're just going to start here. I will just start with Turkey. And the whole point for me just putting in these real basic shapes is for me just to remember how far I have to get in certain spots. Okay? But we're going to start over on Turkey because Turkey, thankfully, lies right on that 45 line. Well, actually just below it, but it lies right on my midsection on my map. So like I said, if you guys remember this crosshair map that I made everybody earlier this year, you can put this over anything and divide it into quarters, which is kind of nice. Okay, so Turkey is a rectangle, right? And then about halfway down the rectangle, we're going to do this. This is the shore of the... Mediterranean Sea. Yes, the Mediterranean Sea. And then right here where this goes, we need the Sinai Peninsula. We need that because we're going to need to mark where Israel's going to be. The rest of this is Africa, and we'll be doing Africa in a couple weeks. Turkey. And remember, you can ask me to pause at any time, and of course, once you're using the video, you can pause me literally at any time. Okay, about halfway down, this is going to be the mark between Syria, Lebanon, and Israel, Jordan. And you're going to have Le Syria kind of coming in at a triangle, with Lebanon being a little bite out of that triangle. Right? Or the Syria wolf eating Lebanon. Don't joke about that. That is a very real fear of Lebanese people right about now. I met a Lebanese lady when we were at that uh, international conference in Florida. Yeah, wow. kind of scary for them sometimes. Oh. And then I Israel will run from Lebanon. Lebanon, and remember, it has to touch this port right here because this is their route to the Indian Ocean. For many years, the Sinai, the Sinai, uh, the Suez Canal was blocked to Israel. I don't know if it still is, but it was. Okay, and then Jordan comes up like this. Sounds like the children are having fun. So far, so good? All right. One moment, please. Sorry. 
This is Yemen. And this is Oman. And up here is United Arab Emirates. I'm actually having to do this out of my memory, at least naming it. And then right here, the Red Sea is going to come very close. You're going to have a spike here of Somalia. And then, again, we're not worrying about Africa right now because that's in two weeks. And we have Qatar and Brunei. No, not Brunei. Bahrain. How are we doing? I used to call it Bahrain. Strait of Hormuz, right? Go up through the Persian Gulf. So far, so good? All right. Now, to put in Iraq and Iran, we're going to need a few more landmarks up here, as you recall. So, if you remember up here, this is the Black Sea. So, come around on the sides, and then you've got the Crimean Peninsula in the middle. So, it kind of looks like that. Like, in a, like a dog and a cat coming towards each other. Sure. The next of the Black Sea, you have the Caspian Sea, which kind of looks like a reverse hook, right? Oh, I'm sorry. My map shows me that the Caspian Sea will actually go below this line. And that's what these lines are for. <coughs> and notice it's okay that I have to erase something. Whenever I draw, I have to erase a lot, and that's no problem. It's an adjustment. We're going to put a line right here between the Black and Caspian Sea. And on this, we're going to build Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. So kind of drop a line halfway between here and the one that's near the Caspian Sea. This is Azerbaijan. The one over here by the Black Sea, this is Georgia. And Armenia. Armenia is between them. And now I have to make another adjustment because I did not make our turkey big enough. Turkey has to touch Armenia. Hmm. Well, then I need to make an adjustment too. Yeah, and again, adjustments are not a bad thing. This they're is not, why I always They're not it. like, this is wrong, you need to change this. Hmm. It's just adjusting. Lots yeah. of artists adjust. I watch a Disney animator sometime. They start with a circle, they don't start with a circle. They start with a circle. And then they make a drawing. That's why they have those blue and yet red pencils, because they're making adjustments and they'll put the black pencil over top. Okay, so from here, we're going to take a line down here. Oh, sorry, we're first going to put in Kuwait. Now, if you remember Kuwait, the key with Kuwait is it stops Iraq from having access Actually, to the Persian um, Gulf, which is the whole point to the Persian Gulf. Yeah. Actually, Iraq does have a, like a teeny little port next to U U Kuwait. Hmm, maybe it does. Okay, and then up here, we basically go kind of like that. I can never do Iraq correctly, and I apologize to all people from Iraq. It's kind of like a triangle. Kind of. 
Actually, I found out there is such a thing as a World Geography Triangle Association that judges the triangulability of all nations, and the most triangular nation, according to the most recent report, is Honduras. Weird. We're like 154th, which means there's 153 countries more shaped like a triangle than we are. <laughs> Go away. The weird guy is shaped like a triangle. All right, now, uh, Mom, Iraq Armenia has to, to touch, touch the Black Sea. Hmm? Armenia has to touch the Black Sea. Black Sea. Um, Arme Armenia does not, according to this map. And according to Satara, it does. Congratulations to Satara. Okay, so Iraq has to touch Armenia, Turkey, Iraq, come all the way down here. It'll scoop around the Caspian Sea. So right here where this line is, right, we're going to come out, okay? And we're going to curl down to about here. This is Iran. And again, I'm going to make an adjustment and move my India over. No biggie. If you still got quite a bit of, of line here, you're okay. Now, we're going to take and make a roughly diamond shape for the major part of, of India, as you recall. So up and down. And within this space, we have to put Pakistan and Afghanistan. Does anyone remember which one touches the ocean and which one does not? Pakistan touches the ocean. Perfect. OK. So Pakistan is going to touch Iraq here. It's going to come up. And it's going to go right over to this knob of India, the Kashmiri region, which both countries are fighting over, is right up in here. So this is Pakistan. And then Afghanistan is right in here. Now, I'm already off in terms of shape and in terms of you know, keeping track of this line, but we're, we're close. We got the I'm not going to worry location. about it. Hmm? We, got the general we location. do have the general location, and that's the whole point of this. So then going back on this, Yemen is, her capital is here. I believe it is called Sanaa. Oman's capital is called Muscat. And it's right here where it can help control the Gulf of Oman. So it makes sense that its capital is right here. UAE's capital at Dubai. And then we have Qatar. And I'm sorry, I have forgotten its capital. Iraq's capital is Baghdad. You mean Qatar? Iran is Tehran, Afghanistan is Kabul, and Pakistan is Islamabad. Up here, again, trying to be near that Kashmiri region. And India, Delhi. You're not trying to be near that Kashmiri region. Well, there, there's some things about Kashmir that are desired by both countries. As we're called, technically speaking, it's I think it's split in half, but oh well. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, Everyone with me? The Kashmir re agent in this where all the rivers flow into? Uh, no. So we're going to take a chunk out of India right here because you know if you look at a map, Nepal looks like it's into India. This is Nepal with its capital at Kathmandu. Anyone ever heard of Kathmandu? Mm -hmm. No. Well, listen for it the next time. Kathmandu. 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 Sounds like not new. I'm not new. I'm not new. I'm not new? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kathmandu. Yeah, Kathmandu sounds like I'm not new. Kathmandu. Yep, I'm not crazy. It's Kathmandu. Okay, everyone with me? Yes. We're all good? Yep. Okay, now India will actually, we're going to have to cheat. Bangladesh is smaller than this, but it's right here, right at the top of the Bay of Bengal. And India wraps right around and comes down on this other side over here. So India completely envelops Bangladesh. Is Bangladesh afraid India will swallow it? 
Well, actually, right after the um, right after the English gave India to the Indian people, the issue was India has three religions. That's what the people of Hindu. There is a large Muslim population, and there is only a few Christians, most of which are down here in southern India. The uh, Muslims wanted to make sure that there would be enough people to have Muslim-friendly laws. Um, the Hindus obviously wanted to have Hindu-friendly laws, so they decided that they would partition India off and they would create uh, West Pakistan and East Pakistan. And everyone had a certain amount of time. All Hindus had to get out of the what would soon be Muslim areas if they wanted to be in Hindu-friendly areas. And Muslims had to get out of regular of mainland India now and move into the Pakistans. Well, over time, it became too hard to make one country this far apart. So Bangladesh broke away and became Bangladesh and Pakistan and Pakistan. So these are Indian, sorry, these are all people who are Indian by formally by culture, but Pakistan and Bangladesh are mostly Muslim and India is mostly Hindu with a Christian subpopulation down here. Anyway, so Bangladesh and India wraps right around it and then Bhutan is going to be nestled right in here. Sri Lanka, Maldives, Right, and then Sri Lanka, the big teardrop shape over here, Sri Lanka. And then the island of Maldives. And then the string of small islands. Like tears. The Maldives. Good. Very good. You guys are remembering. Now, one of the interesting things about Sri Lanka is it's cut to capitals. One is called Colombo. And the other one is called Sri... Jawad in Purakote. She wear the she 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 Jawad in Purakote. S J K. S J K. The Maldives. Okay, has their capital, and I do not have that written down. It's kind of sad. Okay. So far, so good. We've gotten this quarter more or less filled out. So as you recall, now we've got the Southeast Asian Peninsula, and it kind of looks like this. It's kind of a bulb shape, and look, I'm just making adjustments. No, no, no need to fret if you need to make adjustments. And as you recall, this also uh, has a peninsula that comes straight off of it. Yeah, and, and Thailand's like connected that. to that peninsula. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the easiest way for me to start is to come over here on this edge and just trace around the edge, this is Vietnam. Bum. Vietnam, its capital is at Hanoi. Okay, then down here, kind of do a C-ish shape, and this is Cambodia by the sea, with its capital at Phnom Penh. Does anyone remember how you remember Laos? It's lost in the middle. No, Laos is lost in the middle with a star, a shooting star. Trying to find your way home. Okay, so that's Laos. And Laos's capital is in Vientiane, which is right about where the star would tail meet. Okay, so Thailand and Burma. 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 Okay, so Burma had a military coup. Does anyone know what that's what that means? It means the military took over. Um, and when they took over, they tried to rename the place Myanmar. So you'll hear the names used concurrently because some countries do not recognize the name Myanmar because they don't want to recognize that the military is, took over from a, an elected government. So they will use the term Burma. Those who recognize the military government will use the term Myanmar. So both names are important right now. Okay, so Thailand will kind of come around Laos, right? And will come down on this side of that uh, peninsula. So that Burma, Myanmar, has, and we're just going to come in here. So this will be Burma, Myanmar. Okay? And it 
its capital is Nai Nai Piatwa. I'm just murdering these capital names and I do apologize. And then Thailand. Thailand in their language means free land. It used to be called Siam. So if you see any pre uh, pre 19th century maps, it will be called Siam. And does anyone know the name of Thailand's capital? Mm. Has anyone heard of Bangkok? Or Bangkok? Yeah, Bangkok, Bangkok, Thailand. That is where the king of Thailand lives. All right, halfway down are, we cut it off here. Does anyone remember what country has this section? Uh, oh. Starts with an M. Maldives. Mm, close, Maldives are over here. Oh. Malaysia. Malaysia. Malaysia, good. Okay, to draw Malaysia, remember, we have some Java is celebrated in Borneo. So two long islands, Sumatra, Java, celebs looks kind of like a strange little K, okay. and Borneo. So I want to write that in. Now, right here at the very, very tip of the Malaysian Peninsula, we have a country that is not Malaysia. And you remember what this one is? It is a city in the state. Indonesia. Starts with an S. Singapore. Singapore. Good. Um. Yes. I'm actually doing and pretty well. Don't think that's Malaysia, Mom. This part is Malaysia. Over here, we'll have Indonesia. Yeah, but is it you're talking about the bottom. things that are above mm -hmm. it. Talking about but this belongs to Malaysia, as does this section of Borneo. Yeah, Borneo and Singapore. And I've drawn these two Singapore. close. But that's part of hand drawing a map. You learn. You learn, you adjust, you learn some more. Isn't Indonesia under? Uh, Over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the island of Sumatra, the island of Java the island of celebs, and remember, it's good to write these in because some of the seas around here. Okay. So Malaysia is this and this section of Borneo. Everything else is Indonesia. And then Indonesia includes the New Guinea Islands, so we're going to over here, remember New Guinea kind of looks like a parallelogram cut in two. So, all of this, these two not in there, too. All of this is Indonesia. These two, Indonesia has its capital at Jakarta on Java. There's thousands of islands in here, but these are the main ones. And then Papua New Guinea is this half of this island of Guinea, of New Guinea. Okay. How are we doing? Good. Right, yep. And you remember what shape the Philippines roughly takes. A dog. A triceratops. A wolf. A triceratops? <laughs> A wolf falling at the moon. Okay, so we have Palawan, we have Mindanao, we have, and I'm going to adjust China here. Okay, we have Luzon, and we have a bunch of other islands. I love this for science. And then we have the capital, which is Manila. And the Philippines, if the Philippines is a wolf howling, it is howling at what? The crescent moon of Taiwan. Mm-hmm, the moon of Taiwan. Right here. Am I spelling that right? I am not. T-A-I-W-A-N, Taiwan. Okay, and its capital is at Taipei. Now there's a lot of tension between Taiwan and China because China says Taiwan belongs to them.
Taiwan says no, it does not. China's coastline right along here. We're going to come up, we're going to come down, we're going to come up again. What peninsula is this? Oh. The uh, Korean. The Korean peninsula. peninsula, and we're going to put a line across it. Mm. And North then North Korea, Korea is going to go along more of this. So this is North Korea. And I South think Korean somebody's North. outside and wants to see you. Man. They have to wait, unless they're bleeding. And then North Korea's capital is Pyongyang. South Korea's capital is Seoul. Okay? Okay. So remember, we start from here at the bottom and we kind of curve our way up. This is going to help us form Japan. On the other side, we're going to take this and we're going to come up so it doesn't quite touch that crescent. From here, we go in, we go out. We come in with a big teardrop shape, and this is the top of Russia. Okay, we haven't defined China's borders yet, but that's the outline we're looking for. This is the Kamchatka Peninsula. Which, I just love that word, Kamchatka. It's kind of fun. All right, China is made, like Indonesia, of hundreds of islands. But the main ones are Honshu, and so that's going to be this one here, right? Looks kind of like a J. And then, of course, I have to forget the name of this island up here. We've got a triangular shaped island, and then we've got two islands right there. This is Japan. In the bathtub. <laughs> With the capital of Tokyo. And you're right, this section is Japan's bathtub, otherwise known as the Sea of Japan. Now, can you see why any um, ports that Japan, that Russia holds right here along this coastline is going to be held, or is going to be partially controlled by Japan? So if they start having issues, Japan can really start limiting Russia's choices in terms of leaving any of these ports. Because it's easy for Japan to blockade all of the ways into and out of the Sea of Japan. And in fact, during World War II, that was our big problem too. We had to send submarines in here because obviously our warships were not gonna be able to go through. Okay. So now that we've got Japan and the Koreas, now we're going to start defining where China and Mongolia and Russia's borders fall. Now obviously Russia is all of that. So starting with North Korea, we're going to go Two up here, to see you, Mom. but not but not touch Russia. We're going to go up and down. Okay? One. And then we're going to come out and around. <laughs> We go up at a point. The reason we're doing this is because Mongolia and Kazakhstan won't quite touch, but they're going to be close. So you're almost making an X right here, right above where Nepal and, and India are, and that's going to mark, you know, that's going to mark where China, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan become very, very close. And then China comes out a little bit here. So now we have China defined. Mom, she wants to see you. That's nice. I'm teaching. Fire, float, or blow? Let's just make it fire. All right. Finish that up. Yes? OK. So we have China. Does anyone remember China's capital? City? No, Shanghai. One of the biggest 
the Forbidden City is inside Beijing. And the other one is Hong Kong. Anyone heard of Hong Kong? Yes. Yep, there it is. I have Those a green from Hong Kong. To know. I, I suppose I shouldn't put, there. I should not put uh, stars because they are not capitals. They're just circles. Okay. And then in Mongolia, we have Mongolians, capital. It's U, Lan. I'm double checking the spelling here. Batar. So it's almost like U Lan Batar. U Lan Batar. Mm hmm. Lan Batar. U Lan Batar. Okay. We're just coming across Russia here. All right, so now our last section is going to be the stands. Oh, the fun part. <laughs> the fun part. Okay, so starting here on the Caspian Sea, right here on this, Who's got on the stand? western side, no, oh, up and Kazakhstan. down, the Kazakhstan hat. Yeah, it's kind of like a giant hat that's in weight making. And then right here by the bulge, there used to be Arl Sea, and we're going to need this as a landmark. Now, interestingly enough, I was reading Prisoners of Geography. Uh, this week, and he was talking about the fact that when Stalin drew the lines of the stands here, he was deliberately trying to break up people groups and force minority, lots of different minority groups to live together, and that, he figured, would make these countries weak enough that they would not be able to come against the USSR. Okay, to make Kazakhstan, we're going to come across here and go down, right? And then we're going to basically go across to China. Okay, this one's hard. And over here, do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Kazakhstan. K A A Z. I always want to make it K H. K A Z A K A K H. Kazakhstan. Kazakh. Oh. Literally means land of the Cossack people. Okay, then Turkmenistan, which is where the Turks originally came from, that's going to sit right here on top of this bulge of Iran. So we're going to want to start here and kind of curve it around until it touches Afghanistan and Iran. This is Turkmenistan. Literally, the Turkmen, the land of the Turkmen. Okay. We still have Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. And the okay. Kyrgyzstan wolf. So it kind of looks like this. Here. See how it's kind of a wolf? Okay. And then Tajikistan is going to be under the Kyrgyzstan wolf. And Uzbekistan looks nothing like this, alas. But Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. But we're trying, right? Okay. And then capitals on Kazakhstan is, let's see, Astana. I'm still learning this too. And the rest is Russia? The rest is Russia, yes. And again, you know, we tried really hard to make everything work, and we're still not quite there, but this is fitting better than we've ever done, right? So this is good. This works. All right, Kyrgyzstan is Bishkek. About here. Turkmenistan is Ashgabat, and it's right on the Iranian border. Uzbekistan is Tashkent. It's right near Kyrgyzstan. And Tajikistan's capital is Dushanbe. And I do not know, I'm probably murdering all of these. Okay. I thought we did pretty good. We did better than last week. We've done better than, this is better than we've done any of them thus far. To finish off Russia, right up here where Kazakhstan is going to be, we're going to cheat because Russia is up here. We're going to need a divot into Russia, kind of like that. You'll see why in a minute. 
uh, then it's going to come way out over here, and it's going to extend well past Turkey. But we're going to start with here, the Sea of Azov, this, that's this point of the ear. Come out here, and that's going to be the Russian border. Everything else is going to be, and now mind you, this is the Crimean Peninsula. Russia technically took that recently. It used to belong to Ukraine. It was given to Ukraine when Russia was fairly certain that it would keep control of the Ukraine as part of the USSR. And so a lot of things happened. About five years ago, Russia took Crimea back. And eventually, everyone decided to say, look, it belongs to Ukraine. We're leaving it on the map as Ukraine. But we're not willing to actually kick you out of Crimea. So that's where things sit right now. OK. And then what is Moscow's capital? Russia. What is Russia's Moscow. capital? Moscow. Moscow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost lunchtime, right? Okay. Now, rivers. Does anyone remember what rivers we need to do? Seeing river, right? River. No, 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 that's what it's going to be. The Volga. The Volga. Okay. Um, not exactly. Okay. It says the Volga. Volga is in Russia. Volga will come. Well, that's because the Ural Mountains start here. Yeah, the Ural Mountains start here and they go this way. So let's start with the Ural Mountains. So the Ural Mountains start here, north of the Caspian Sea, and they kind of veer east eastwards. And this is the dividing line of what? Russia in Syria. Kazakhstan. Asia and Europe. So Moscow is actually in Europe even though Russia covers both countries. What other mountain ranges are there? Um, the Caucasus. Caucasus, where do the Caucasus run? And between Black Sea and Caspian. Yeah, they went in the Black Sea and Caspian Sea. So everything, this is the Caucasus Mountains. Do we have the Himalaya? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in Europe. High uh, in the up, sing a lonely goat herd. Yeah. Carpet the mountains, okay. goats in the cold. This is two. There you go. Okay, and then in the Caucasus, there is one big mountain. Does anyone remember the highest point in Europe? Everest. And that's the highest point in Asia. Oh. L. Not Elvis. Oh. Okay. What other mountain ranges are there? Himalayas. The Himalayas. Where do the Himalayas run? Along China and India. Along the Chinese Indian border. That's right. All along here, and in fact, up in here as well. Himalaya. The Houses of Snow. What famous mountain is right on the border of Nepal? Mount Everest. That is not Everest. Mm, hardly anybody's gotten to the top of it. Hardly anybody. There's so many people getting to the top of it, it's trash heap now. They actually are having trouble, and I hate to say this, but some of the newest landmarks on Mount Everest are people who died and been frozen there, and they haven't been able to get them down yet. So turn at the dead mountaineer who's wearing pink, then turn next at the dead mountaineer who's wearing blue with red boots, then, I'm serious. It's a problem. Mountain mountain. And there's even uh, discarded oxygen bottles everywhere, from what I hear. Okay. So it's basically turning it into a landfill. It is. Kind of, kind of sad, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Um, up here, there's a couple other smaller mountain ranges. We have the Kunlun Mountains. These are not on your list, but these are the Kunluns. We have the Tian Shan Mountains up here. And we have the Altai Mountains. And you can see how these mountains form the border between Mongolia and China. The biggest mountain is actually across the sea. It's the entire landmass across the sea. OK, and then this whole area is really, really mountainous, which is going to play into our rivers. OK. Yay. Water features. What do we already have up here that we can label? We've got the Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Aral Sea, Mediterranean. What can we label? Mesopotamia and Mesopotamia is in between Tigris and Euphrates. 
Okay, so we have the Tigris and the Euphrates River. Ganges. So the Tigris, the Tigris is on top, right here where Baghdad is. Euphrates is sea. underneath. Yep. We have a label the Arabian Sea. Arabian Sea, good. Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal. South China Sea, East China Sea. Good, so we have the South China Sea. And the East China Sea. And that must be the Pacific Ocean. Over here, Pacific Ocean, good. And bottom will be... Indian Ocean. Indian yeah. Ocean. Which actually touches... Top, and then the top will be the Southern Oceans. Southern Ocean. Oh, well, okay, then the Eastern Ocean. We got East China Sea here. What about this? Does anyone remember what this is called? Red Sea. Red Sea. Red Sea Persian. Uh, what about Persian this one? Persian Gulf. Persian Gulf. Persian Gulf. What about here? This is the Strait of Hormuz. Very important strait. And the Gulf of Oman, which is how we can remember Oman is here, because Oman, we need the Gulf of Oman. Okay? And then the Gulf of Aden. The uh, Sinai Strait. No, but this is the Gulf of Aqaba, and I don't remember what this one is. But the Sinai, um, sorry, the Suez Canal is right there. Okay, does anyone remember how water flows uphill, downhill, sideways, what? Up to downhill. Down. Okay, so all rivers in this area are going to start where? From the mountains. The mountains. Does anyone remember how we start our Indus River? Indus River is here. It goes up, over, and through Pakistan. Pakistan has an entire river coming in. And then what is the major river through the north of India? The uh, Ganges. The Ganges. So we start right where the Indus River starts and we whip around and we come out in Bengal. Bay of Bengal. Well, we go through Bangladesh into the Bay of Bengal, correct. Okay. The Brahmaputra River. I got this wrong for you kids last time. The Brahmaputra is going to start almost in the same place. It's going to run across north of Nepal. It's going to come way out here to Myanmar. It's going to go straight back in, and it's going to come out in the same spot. The Ganges and the Brahmaputra are actually going to um, meet in the same uh, delta. The Ganges Delta. Mm -hmm. The Brahmaputra River, the Irwadi. So now, that's all the rivers that start up here in the Himalayas. Everything else is going to start in the Tibetan Plateau, which is part of the Himalayas, right? So, right here above Bhutan, we're going to have the starts of four rivers. So the first one is the Irwadi. You start here, come down, skirt around the Brahma River, and go through Myanmar and out down here. Irwadi. Start in the same general area. Follow along until we get to Laos. And then this one acts as the border between Laos and Cam and Laos and Thailand. Okay? Going right near this, cutting through Cambodia and out through Vietnam. This is the Mekong River. If you study, or rather when you study the Vietnam War, the Mekong River, very important. What's the one that comes out here near Shanghai? Mm. Bengal? No. No, not the Bengal River. We have the Hongu and the Jiangxiang, which also is the, the Yellow and the Yangtze River. Mm. So we're going to start at the same spot. 
we're going to come, now the Yellow River is the, the Yangtze, or the Jiangtong, which in Chinese means the long river, is the longest river to exist in one single country. Mm. So it's going to come around these, okay, down, and then it's going to work its way up. It does not look very long, but it is very, very long. This is the, we call it the Yangtze in this country. It basically goes through the whole China. Yeah, pretty much. And then starting in the same general area, once again, you take a loop-de-loop, -loop, then go up, okay, and then down around China and out the Yellow Sea. This is the, it comes out the Yellow Sea, so it is the Yellow Sea. This is the Yellow River. There's also a Chinese okay. One we were supposed to do and didn't is called the Amur. So let's say that word, Amur yeah. River. Okay, Amur starts in Mongolia, but it's going to be part of the border between Russia and China. So at least for this part, it's easy. Just follow that. But when it gets here, instead of going back towards Korea, it's going to escape north. The Amur. Running away from Korea. Yep, running away from Korea. It's going that way. The Amur River. Now up here we have a lake. Does anyone know what lake this is? This is the deepest lake in the world. Has anyone heard of it? Uh -huh. We haven't covered it yet. This is Lake Baikal, deepest lake in the world. Like a teardrop or an eyelash or something? Yeah, it kind of does look like a backwards J. A teardrop or an eyelash will work. There's a river called the Lena that comes out of the out of Baikal, so it comes out, and it basically goes up here. The Lena River. I'm gonna make it really dark. That's fine. We have another river that starts here just in Mongolia and works its way up this way. This one's called the Yenizi River. We have another one that starts right where Kazakhstan. It comes up, and this is why we needed that little divot. This is the Ob. And finally, we have the Ural River, which starts up here and comes down to the Caspian Sea. Does anybody notice anything about these rivers in Russia? There's a lot. Considering a big Russia, is not necessarily, but they are big. They're long. They're long. What direction do they mostly run? Brandy Downwards. Well, they, they run north to south. This is one of the problems with trying to ship anything in Russia for centuries. These rivers are hundreds of miles apart, and they all go north to south. Nothing connects. That's one of the reasons why this section of Russia, beyond the Urals, was so sparsely populated even today. It's extremely difficult to transport things. Now, Beijing, they took a different tack. One of the emperors of Beijing said, part of the problem is our Yellow River and our Yangtze River all go east to west. So we're going to build a canal. Can I go outside? No. I'm done. Wait. We're going to build a canal going north and south. And this canal still exists and is still used is the longest canal in the world, then and now. Yes. Wait. We're almost done. You need to wait here. Do I have a time? Does anyone have any? 11.28. Perfect. Almost done. All right. So this is pretty much the map. Let's see. We have the Sea of Celebs there. So the Sea there. The Sea of Adamon there. But by and large, this is a pretty good map. How do you guys feel versus last week? I actually feel a lot more good. better. This is a lot better map than we did last week. Good. Okay. So, you know, find a map. You know, put a crosshair on it or fold it in half if you can. Or, you know, even if you're allowed to. I find drawing things in quarters is a lot easier. There's a lot more stuff in here. Oh, we forgot soon. Shoot, shoot, shoot. We forgot deserts are supposed to put in here. Whoa. Okay, all deserts, deserts, all Arabia. Arabian desert. There is a Syrian desert. Orange. Yep, orange works. The Great Indian Desert. Does anyone remember where that is? India. It's actually on the border of India and Pakistan. I said it was India because it is in India. 
of the world that would be called the Indian the Gobi Desert. Desert is over here between Mongolia. Mongolia and China. The Takla Makan is on the other side. It's over here. Those are the deserts I think we need. Arabian, Syrian, Gobi, Takalakan, Great Indian. And there's so no if you're thinking of the two much. humped camels, they're from this region. That's where they're originally from, and that's what they're native to. And if you think of Marco Polo, he landed in Jerusalem and actually worked his way across Iran and then went through the Takalakan and Gobi deserts before dropping down into Chile. So if you find a documentary called The Bishops of Marco Polo, they actually go right across this region and um, follow those tracks. Okay, this is not half bad. And I think, do we still have another week before we do our... Yeah, next week is body. Okay, next week is our assessment. So that's one of the reasons why I made this video. You guys can watch this video and follow along this week. Next week is our blank, blank paper assessment. We are going to go ahead and hit off. Um, we are going to hand you a blank piece of paper and you will draw what you can. 